Okay, the first brush that we're going to take a look at is the Move Brush. To load up the Move Brush, let's go ahead and tap B for a brush, for a brush menu. Then tap M for all the brushes that start with M that you can see here. And then Move is right here, and you can hit hotkey uh, V to load that up. Now, before I click and drag on here, you'll notice that on the left side of my model, I have my brush, and on the other side, the right side, I have a little red uh, dot. That's going to let me know that I have symmetry turned on. So anytime I do something on this side of the model, it's going to do it on the opposite side. To turn um, symmetry on and off, you can tap X, and then I'll turn that on and off. And that little dot is going to give you an indication of where you're at. So taking a look at the move brush, you can see that it's going to work purely off of whatever your uh, viewport vantage point is. So if I click here and drag on the outer edge, that's going to drag this out here. And if I drag here as well, if I want to drag out the front that I can turn my model so I'm looking more at the side view and drag that out. And I want you to also notice that the size of your brush plays a big part in how the move brush is going to work. So if we tap S and drag the slider down and make our brush smaller, Obviously when we pull out, it's going to be a lot smaller. So then you can do stuff like uh, pulling out teeth or scales and stuff like that. But if you want to move large chunks um, of your model, you're going to tap S and make your brush size a lot larger. So I'm going to make my brush size actually as large as it, large as it can go and then just click and drag and then just pull this shape around until you start finding something interesting. I'm going to kind of build up a shape that is kind of like a torso. So from the side, you know, I'm kind of pushing and pulling this like it's a piece of clay, which is really cool. And from the front, I'm gonna go ahead and push this in a little bit here. So you can see rather quickly, I can build up um, a shape that I'm looking for. And if this was a torso, then this is going to be kind of like the bend with inside of the torso here. And for any of the brushes that we use, if we hold down shift and we draw on that, that's going to smooth out the surface. So that's something that you're going to learn to use all the time. No matter what brush you're using, you might draw some strokes and then you might hold down shift and then smooth with that. If you see that, if you hold down shift, it's going to turn your cursor blue. So it'll let you know that you're um, working with the, the smooth um, brush at that point. So it's a real easy way for you to just quickly make a cool looking shape, then smooth some of that out. And if I want to get my brush size smaller, then I just tap S and then I start dragging up. This will let you just really quickly rough out a shape for what you're looking for. So say I wanted to do something where arms are going to start to come out here. I just kind of pull that out just a little bit. And maybe this is going to dip in just a little bit for where the legs might insert into the body. And if I make this a little bit larger, I can taper the waist coming in on this and looking from more of a top down view, then I can start getting an idea of the overall shape of this model. One thing I want you to note whenever you're working in 3D inside the computer, it's not like working with clay, obviously, or working in the real world. The best thing you can do for yourself is to make a move and then constantly be turning your model so you can view it from different vantage points. This lets you check everything in true 3D space. Because we're in the computer, it's going to be really tough for you to understand exactly what you're doing to your model volume wise when you start to push and pull things around. So you're always going to need to continually spin your model around whenever you're working on it. And that's going to give you uh, a good indication of what this thing looks like in true 3D space. So you can see things might look okay from the side view here, and I've got a nice curve going on. But I turn to the side and it looks like the stomach area would be sticking out too far. So I can kind of 
from this vantage point pull that in a little bit. So now you can see it's starting to work as I turn around the entire model. And that's what you want. You want to make sure that your proportions look good from all vantage points whenever you're sculpting. So the next thing I'd like to show you for this brush is how we can set up a hotkey. Um, so you can just hit any one of your keyboard shortcuts and you can pull up this brush. I like to map my hotkeys for brushes to one through nine or zero, um, right around in that range. So for the move brush, um, I think I've got it on four. So to get a uh, brush to have a hotkey with it, you're going to want to um, go ahead and have this brush palette and we're going to dock it over here on this section. So I'm going to bring up brush, which is right here. Click that, and then we're going to click this little icon thing here, and it's going to push all of our brushes over here. Now, for some reason, I don't know if this is a bug, but whenever I try to apply hotkeys to this icon over here, it um, looks like it takes, but it really doesn't. So I found that opening up the brush palette, pushing it off over to here, and then finding the brush that I have selected, and then if I hold down Control and Alt, and if I click on a brush, you can see that as soon as you do that, it's going to say up and top here. It, it went away because uh, I moved my cursor. If we hold down Control and Alt, click here, you can see it says press any key combination to assign custom hotkey or press escape or mouse button to cancel or press delete to remove previous custom assignment. So currently I have that on four. I'll go ahead and hit delete just to remove it and you can see that that custom hotkey was removed successfully that'll help if anything gets uh, messed up with the hotkeys for that so now i'm going to reset this i'm going to hold down control and alt click here and i'm just going to tap the number four and you can see it's going to say hotkey note custom hotkey assigned successfully so i'm just going to move to a different brush real quick by hitting the hotkey that i've already have assigned and i'm going to tap four for this and you can see that it's changed from the standard brush that I had to the move brush. So that's how you can quickly set up some hotkeys for your brushes. And you don't need to do this. Um, at first, you're going to probably want to, um, you know, learn how to navigate the brush menu set. So just, again, for bringing up brushes, you just tap B and it's going to show up underneath your cursor. There's tons of brushes inside a ZBrush and it's going to take a while to learn each one of these different brushes. But I'm going to show you just the core set of brushes that I, I use. Um, I think if you learn about six or seven different brushes, there's nothing that you're not going to be able to sculpt inside a ZBrush. So we're going to be going over those brushes. So again, tap B to bring up your brush menu set. Tap M to go into um, the M set here and then move is right here and you can tap it to bring that up or you can use your hotkeys that you set up for yourself so this is the move brush so take a little bit of time just go ahead and push and pull your surface around get some kind of interesting shape just kind of learn how it uh, feels whenever you uh, change the brush size to move this thing around to get different effects for what your model is going to look like